previously on Lost. Mate, that would be easy. If only we were filming about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> we'll fill up a face with breakers. <laughs> that gearbox is now ready to go in. We've got a slight complication that we've got either the wrong flywheel or there's a problem with the flywheel anyway. <laughs> been a few days but here we are back on the 964 we've got a replacement flywheel a starter ring which lines up on there an all important timing ring and before we put it on the car i just got to put a new spigot bearing in it just to make sure we don't need to take the gearbox off again straight away the flywheel's on and talked i had to loosen off the crank sensor here because I thought with the new uh, trigger wheel, I didn't want to damage the end of it. So I've loosened that off. I've just got to reset the gap with the feeler gauge there. It's as simple as putting that in and tightening that up. It'll be much easier at this point than it will be when the gearbox and everything's on. So I'll do that and we'll get on with putting on the clutch cover. Got the release bearing now snapped into the clutch. I am absolutely dreading trying to assemble this uh, fork mechanism with the gearbox bolted into the car but I don't know maybe it's possible Craig seems to just think it's very funny because he's done it on the blue one and um, didn't have a very good day out it's been a little pause in proceedings because Phil's come out and possibly saved so a mess or, or you know wrecked your life maybe I don't know it'd be but worse yeah. if you'd gone just had a had a thought this is what was bolted to this which is part of a load of bits that i bought last to, week yeah last week to put this back to stock clutch um, or a stock mechanism and they're basically all 964 turbo parts and uh, the problem with that is that they're 964 turbo parts and that is a dual mass flywheel so the problem with that is that that is too short this is the one for the rs flywheel the single mass flywheel which is what you see here which is not what we're using because that wasn't right for this car either. No, hopefully that's going to fit the GT3. <laughs> that will fit the GT3 because I hope because there's two of them now. Um, you click them. <laughs> I might have a spare RS fly. I might have two spares. Let's work that one out later though. For, but for now, we're going to use the part that I've bought for my GT3, which is the RS shaft. There, Bolt that up. And send it up. Simply put it, put do, the gearbox in. Do a little in. wiggle with this bit. Oh, I, this I, bit's so I don't know how many times I've said it in this film, but I'm really not looking forward to that. <laughs> I bet you it's just going to fire straight in now. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but yeah, get that bolted up and we'll give that a lift up. Okay. Right. Oh. That's that. How is that ever going to stay there while we put the gearbox on? It just wants to fall off. <laughs> oh dear. So we've just watched a quick YouTube and... We, we need to give him a shout out really, whoever that is, because he it's taken him about an hour and a half and he kept on filming. I would have chopped my toys out the yes, pan and thrown the camera on me. Whoever that man is, he's done well. <laughs> Let's give him a shout out. <laughs> Bearded garage, thank you. Your, there you go. your torture is about to become our torture. So. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be worse because our engine's in the car. But yeah, he's got that taped up there with a bit of masking tape. Yep. So. Leveled up, not on the mounting face of the where the gearbox mounts to the engine here. So in theory, we'll be able to pull that out after this is all lined up and slides on perfectly the first time we try it. Oh, let's hope so. Well, the, the, <laughs> See the tape's coming off. Oh. <laughs> so we get some... Right, um, see you when the gearbox is on. <laughs> Got a bit of an update. We've managed to keep the fork in position. Don't you dare say anything positive on video just yet. We're not, we're not done yet. <laughs> well, no, we're not, but it's, you know, it's getting closer to done. I've just managed to get it in theory in the right place for that clutch fork where it is between the tabs and the gearbox we've still got to get the shaft through with the, the, bear, through, the yeah. bearing on the one end so we're just finishing getting the gearbox flush like fitted up and then we've got potentially another fight but I dare, do i dare say anything positive no, no we'll be taking anything. the gearbox yeah, back off in exactly. a minute won't we exactly so, yeah. 
just, go, just nipping these up a little bit at a time. And they're only temporary, they don't have the washers on them already. And never mind that, I've just realised I'm actually filming someone do work, <laughs> rather than just talk about it afterwards. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there you go, it's, it's what you wanted. It's just the control freak in me, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I think we're in business. We're in business. Oh, mate, I'm going to allow myself to say it. It flew on. <laughs> I, I mean, it was our first go, wasn't it? We haven't had to take it off again, which is a bonus for oh, us. That was, I mean, that was quite a delicate procedure. That we've got to do it was again very tense, next week. But yeah, you might even be able to get your the camera up there to just show what we're working with up here. I'm sure it'd be easier if the engine was out of the yeah. car, but yeah, you can see the end of that shaft there. So the container. That bit there is a plastic cap that is the end of the, um, the rod. And then what we're doing up here, this bolt here is just holding the retaining clip in, but everything went through. It required some serious taparoos. The bearing fell off the end once, got stuck in the fork. The forks need some serious alignment as you're tapping it in. And my heart rate's about 180. I'm relieved. <laughs> this moment, everything else just bolts on. But yeah, I think that's it. That's done. So, happy days. I'll go back to my desk. Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty much back in now. Oh, sorry, I'm just banging my head. Uh, last little complication is connecting up the clutch slave. So you can see up the top there is the slave cylinder, which has a Dash 4 adapter coming out of it now or 4 an and here coming out of the car we pre-adapted that to three so i just need to take that adapter that we made off and re-adapt it to a four and simply make a pipe that's the adapter off the car got this new fitting which is going to be shaved down and basically welded onto there the same as that one was i've been around to the lathe cleaned up both of the mating surfaces it's time to fire up the rtech and uh, I hope I've got enough skills to join this together by now. Well, I'm going to lose an eye here. Whoa, <laughs> absolute <laughs> mate. <laughs> Shall I line these up? No, I'll do them on the opposite. Like, looks better. Let's see what happens. Tack. Don't think I'm going to win any awards, but hopefully it won't leak and shouldn't fall off. I have been practicing quite a lot on this thing. I can do stainless pipe to a reasonable standard now. So yeah, if you're looking for a welder, this one's beautiful for beginners. There we go, adapted 45 degree, 90 degree. I just need to fill in this piece here with a piece of hose and we're in business. It's time. It's time for me to squirt you in the eye with brake fluid again. No, it's not, because look, protection, ah! <laughs> so I'll get underneath time. and we'll try and bleed this thing. Sweet. I mean, can everybody cross their fingers, please? It's open. Put your foot on. I'll stand out of the way and see if fluid right, comes well, out. I think it's going to go to the floor, isn't it? Because that's what it did last time. Yeah. Yeah, give it a couple of pumps and we'll see if fluid comes out eventually. Yeah, yeah filled it up to the max. There we go. It's coming out now. Right, now it's coming through. I'll we'll get under and we'll try and bleed it. Can't do that one-handed, though, so you lot will have to believe us. <laughs> right. Let's make sure it's in neutral. What, so we can fire it off the ramp in a minute? Well, you're not going to fire it off the ramp just in neutral, are you? <laughs> we'll see if it is, runs. Is the battery on? Well, yeah, it's no. stuck in here, you fire it up. Right, take 27. <laughs> we're ready for some deadly scraping. Well, I hope down. it runs, because we've um, had the crank trigger oh, move. Yeah, yeah, that's point, isn't it? It says it's in neutral. No. Well, does it feel like neutral? Yeah, and it feels wobbly. That's Good. Fun. That's a good start. <laughs> Have you got the, all the earths on it, I think? Yeah. Or to the starter as well. Yeah, yeah, the starter's definitely earth. Oh, no, the cat's been off. Nah, Battery's dead. Batteries, I think. Uh, take 30. <laughs> as you can see by that, it might not exactly be going to plan. 
So, you know, you saw me take the crank trigger off or move it out of the way to fit that flywheel. So I've loaded up the computer now because the car won't start. I want to make sure it's seeing a, a crank signal. If it is seeing a crank signal, I didn't check spacing of the missing teeth on the trigger wheel. So yeah, we've swapped the flywheel, which means the um, trigger wheel has changed as well. So I don't know if they're in a different place, so it's trying to fire completely out of sync. I guess there's one way to find out. Well, let's give it a live test. So we're interested in this trigger error, number of trigger errors, and RPM. Let's just see if it's reading any RPM. That's not ideal. Okay, let's reset the sensor and try again. Hopefully we're panic averted. I've halved the gap on the sensor. It seems to have spluttered into life. So I halved it to a piece nothing. of paper. Yeah, basically. yeah. <laughs> Which is way under Porsche spec. But yeah, it says one mil, isn't it, or something? One, about a mil, yeah. yeah. Between 0.8 and 1.2. But I sort of have this recollection of us yeah, when definitely. we fitted the Haltech, but we, I, we have definitely been through this before. And we um, certainly didn't write it down. So all we've got to hope now is that the um, trigger wheel isn't slightly off centre. Well, no, not off centre. I'm on about the missing teeth moved round the clock. Oh, right. That's yeah, what yeah. I was worried about. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at trigger errors, trigger error count, and that's. And most importantly, RPM. see if it starts would be the most important thing. And is it, you can see here, is it in sync there? Uh, sensor cold, oh, it's O2, sorry. No it's not. No, but most importantly, no errors. No errors on the count, and it's running. Sounds, that, yeah, it's right. I think woohoo is the, well, so far, shall I put my foot on the clutch? Oh, it stinks, it's it's, uh, let, well, let's investigate that next. <laughs> That is particularly stinky. Let's go under and see what's happening below. See what's smoking, most importantly. It smells like brake fluid on a manifold. I mean, we did squirt a lot in my face last week, so I'm hoping it's just brake fluid every... Yeah, I guess so. On the ground just in case it automatically fires me off the ramp that yeah way. to see how well i close well we're sort of on the ground <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see how it fires up now because of that stumbling into life thing is a bit unusual isn't it yeah it's never done that before yeah, so let's see Before Jay kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> Before I take the gearbox off again and drop it on my head. I thought I'd, uh, so I've just tried starting it with it in fourth gear, starting the car up with my foot planted and I could just about get the car started and it won't, it doesn't drive away. And then the bite point is like so far down the pedal, like just lift it up ever so slightly. So we're wondering whether it just needs more bleeding. If it I hope isn't it does. that. I'm wondering whether there's a different fork that goes with the single mass uh, release bearing mechanism or something. But first, we're going to bleed it and see whether we can make ourselves a bit happier than we are right now. <laughs> well, I hope it bleeds. <laughs> so, we may have found the reason. This is an aftermarket clutch stop by the looks of it. Um, and the reason I know that is because you don't use this number, number 13, you use this number 
number 12. And for those of you that know Japanese cars, everything comes with a 12 instead of a 13. So yeah, I've undone those. I just need to whip this off here. And hopefully, once this is removed, it'll allow a 10 mil extra travel in that pedal. And that will be enough to um, get the clearance we need to disengage the clutch. Fingers crossed. Can we just point out at this point, with all that off, how beetly that looks? <laughs> Look at the state of it. <laughs> what do you mean? It's it's a masterpiece. I'm actually quite impressed by the design of this, but then you probably would be. You'd be impressed if this was you, um, you in the 1960s. <laughs> you wouldn't be impressed if it was you in the 1990s, would you? <laughs> Your mum. <laughs> right, where are we? We are at the stage where I believe we've got quite a bit more travel, but I'm a bit worried about overextending something because that wooden plate, it doesn't look like something out of a beetle. <laughs> it looks like something from the 1920s, that one, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I think that one of these. This these, is the clutch stopper here. Clutch you adjust stop this up and down to gotcha. stop the pedal. So yeah, I, I think I'm gonna very gently see how far I need to push that to get the car into gear while it's running. And then we know that essentially it's fixed the problem and then we can set that afterwards. That's my thought anyway. I hope so. Cross fingers. Let's hope we're there. Finished the alignment. Um, new alignment rig seems excrement. Now we just gotta hope that the clutch works. <laughs> I mean, it definitely engages and disengages now, but whether or not the car moves is a... Uh, it will. It'll be grand, don't you worry. So I'm gonna get this thing back on the ramp, but I thought first I'd ask you guys if this is normal. So clutch pedal, watch the master cylinder. So there's, it feels like there's that much slack before it actually starts pushing the piston in the master cylinder. So I'm losing about 
probably only 10 mil, maybe a bit more, 15 mil of stroke on the pedal there because of that slack. I'm wondering whether that's normal. The other suggestion is that some people need to, they've mentioned that they've elongated the slave cylinder, the rod on the slave cylinder um, by eight mil to solve this problem. Now, to my mind, that doesn't, that's not, that doesn't make sense because if you lengthen the rod on the slave cylinder, all you're kind of doing is moving the position uh, that the same amount of stroke moves because the stroke is determined by the master cylinder ratio to the slave cylinder. So if you move, extend the rod length, it doesn't matter, it's still gonna push the clutch fork the same amount. But I figured it's probably worth having a quick go at that because it's just a case of hopefully turning something up on the lathe to extend the nose of the slave cylinder. So I'm just gonna get this thing back on the ramp and give that a go. Here we go. My finest work on the lathe with my nitrile gloves on, just to make everybody happy. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully that'll prove a concept. Um, I actually really enjoy doing stuff like that. One of my, two of my favorite YouTube um, watches in the evening are inheritance machining and cutting edge engineering. Both of those really enjoy, very, very relaxing. Um, obviously not a patch on anything they do, but I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully it'll at least prove or disprove my theory about the slave cylinder length. If it does, if it does fix the problem, I can obviously make the actual shaft on the slave cylinder uh, from scratch. But for now, I'm hoping that once I put the camera down, that will slot on there with a little bit of Loctite and uh, or glue and stay in there long enough to test this theory. KO in the blue one. You've somehow made it awkward for yourself. I am. Just had another um, smart track fitted to the blue one. Again, thank you very much, guys. I mean, that is the biggest first world problem. <laughs> I can't open my silver Porsche because my blue one's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to damage my BBS wheels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for a push. Beeping. Oh, it wasn't you beeping? No, no. It was just Birmingham. Hit up a little bit. I just smoked the tank, looked up a little bit. So oh, right. It takes the uh, high spots off. Yeah. Glazing it good, real, real good, basically. Yeah, bend it in. <laughs> it is definitely not correct right now. It is drivable as long as I remember to properly plant my foot. Uh, so I might drive it home. But uh, that's probably it for now. If you've got any ideas about what the problem is, you know, what we've missed, what a uh, dumbass I am. 
Uh, I'll put a list of the parts that we've fitted to the car, the clutch parts that we fitted, in the description down below. So if you are an expert, take a look and tell us what we've done wrong. And if you're not an expert, thanks for shopping at driftworks.com. And keep your opinions to yourself. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.